Hello and welcome to another episode of Issuer Update. Joining me today is Kirsten Brewer, President and CEO of Hydrograph Clean Power Inc., ticker symbol HD. Kirsten, welcome. Thank you for having me on. Getting started, for our listeners unfamiliar with Hydrograph, can you give us a quick overview of the company's mission and its core technology? Sure. So we are a graphene producer, and graphene really as a very versatile material. Again, it's the strongest, most conductive material ever discovered, and it has the ability to positively impact almost every industry known to man. Um, so our production process is very differentiated within the space. We have an explosion synthesis process. So exactly as it sounds, we blow up hydrocarbon gases and we basically convert the carbon that was in a gas into a powder mm -hmm. via the explosion. So we have an exceptional purity and um, I would also say exceptional scalability and consistency really due to this patented method. Right. So this patented method for manufacturing graphene, how does it work and why is it a game changer? So it's um, simple in theory. Really, we have a reactor and our current reactor has four uh, 70 liter carbon steel chambers. We pump in acetylene and oxygen into these chambers. You would know acetylene as a welding gas. So it's very volatile. You can imagine it's bringing a lot of energy with it into the potential reaction. We have electrodes within the chambers that fire in synchrony. They destabilize the molecules. The temperature shoots up to 2,500 Kelvin. And then really the force of that converts and crystallizes all the carbon that was in the acetylene into pristine graphene powder. And then our exhaust is a commodity material and that is syngas because of course the hydrogen and the oxygen has to go somewhere. I know it's very technical. Yeah, not yeah. simple at all, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so you're one of the few companies meeting the Graphene Council's Verified Graphene Producer Standards. What does that certification mean for customers and partners? I think it means that we sell exactly what we say we sell. With a lot of new industries, you get a little bit of snake oil. I do, um, for one, believe a lot of the companies that are claiming to produce graphene, either the graphene uh, doesn't match their data sheet or there's no batch to batch consistency. So we hear that a lot of the companies are making something closer to graphite powder. But really, you know, working with the graphene council, I think that it establishes a lot of trust and authority in a system um, where it's previously been lacking. So customers can rest assured that when they do order graphene from us, it is exactly what we are disclosing publicly. Switching gears a little bit, uh, let's talk about your recent announcement about a strategic relationship with the leading North American industrial gas supplier. What does this partnership mean for Hydrograph? This partnership we are extremely excited about internally. This allows us to scale. So we will now have theoretically unlimited access to our feedstock material. They are creating a environment where we are going to be able to scale quickly, effectively. They're a very reputable company. I can't wait to be able to announce the name. Once we have a definitive agreement, uh, we will be disclosing you know, who this gas supplier is. But again, this facility that we're planning is in Texas. And to go back to our production process, um, really the advantages that we have, we're planning for 15 initial reactors. It's actually some upgrades where it's gonna have an improved production output annually. But really, um, because we have these modular systems, we're able to scale with customer demand. So it could um, absolutely be the case that by the time we have the facility open, we have 100 reactors or 200 reactors would be even better. So speaking of this new production facility in Texas, can you walk us through the vision for the site and its potential capacity? Yes. So as mentioned, initial capacity, it's only going to be um, 15 reactors, and that is a production output of about 350 metric tons annually. But again, we are designing this to scale. So the foundation is going to be fully laid and effectively the building that we have planned we're going to have walls that can continually expand. So as mentioned, mm -hmm. um, because we're a growing company, it's very difficult to exactly predict what this ramp up is going to look like. And as we all know, it might be a hockey stick. So it could very well be that, you know, once we start construction, we immediately adjust our plan. So all of that is being built into the vision. And because the capex for these units is relatively low, we might end up with far more reactors um, than we're announcing right now. So we're still early in this development phase for this Texas facility. What do you think the timeline or your anticipated timeline is going to be for the build out? 
So we have the LOI signed. We're now working on that binding agreement with this gas company. Once we have that completed, we will be disclosing um, who we are working with. We hope to break ground this summer with an opening of the facility early 2026. Um, we're not anticipating really any barriers from a regulatory or permitting perspective. We are going to oil and gas territory. Of course, we are oil and gas adjacent. So we are going to a region that is known for industry like this. And I think we're going to see a massive amount of benefit as a company just with this migration. Right. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the application. You recently announced impressive test results on hydrographs, fractional graphene as an uh, additive for polyurethane coatings. This is great. Uh, what were the key takeaways from these studies? So this is great because this is now a new area. We did this work at the Geek, the Graphene Engineering Innovation Center at the UK, where we have a research lab. We have very strong data or have had very strong data in composites, um, all types of plastics, I would say. And now with coatings, we've really shown that we strongly improve anti-corrosive properties, UV resistance, um, scratch resistance, abras abrasive resistance. And I think that this really unlocks a very large market for us. And PU coatings can be used in a wide range of industries from, you know, coating metals, it might be marine coatings. And a lot of the additives that we would be displacing are actually very toxic for the environment. And graphene, despite some concern about it being a nanomaterial, has really been proven to be very benign in our water systems, we suspect, and also even um, inhalation studies. So the, the ability for us coming in just with a carbon material able to knock out some of these really harmful additives and still improve the actual performance benefits mm -hmm. of PU coatings is very exciting. Yeah, that's great. So there are a lot of applications uh, for graphene in general, where do you see the biggest near-term opportunities? I think the biggest near-term opportunities, just because we've had so much interest, I would say, um, from defense-related industries, aerospace, automotive, are these engineering fibers, whether it's a nylon PA6, potentially peak. Really that area, we've seen um, that these are moving forward much faster than anticipated. They're very high volumes. And again, these performance benefits that we're able to generate is really due to how differentiated our graphene is because to explain that a little bit more, our graphene is really in the nano scale. So it's 20 to 50 nanometers. And a lot of these extrusion processes, if you're looking at a nylon fiber, it's at the micron scale. If a graphene particle is 50 microns, it's not going to fit inside that nylon fiber and ours does. And it again, offers really, really significant mechanical strength benefits. So I think moving forward, this just because we're so atomically precise, allows us to be very versatile. Okay, switching gears again, let's dive into the financing um, opportunities. So last year, you closed an oversubscribed $3.8 million private placement. How are these funds being deployed? Overwhelmingly to our business development team and for production. We find it critically important, obviously, to continue to expand our customer pipeline. Um, and I think we've done a fantastic job of that really just even in the past year. But importantly, and this is going back to the Texas migration plan, showing customers that we have the ability to scale, proving to them that we have the ability to build our reactors um, quickly, efficiently, and really deliver on the promises that we're making regarding these very large contracts that we are expecting to start closing, I would say within the next two years. I think that's, um, again, the most important thing for this company at the time. You have a new partnership with NEI Corporation. How does this enhance Hydrograph's offering for customers? This is a good question. I think it's very simple. Really what we want to do, because we make a conductive, black, fluffy powder, not every customer really has the um, knowledge or maybe the equipment internally to handle a nanomaterial. So to the best of our ability, we want to make a drop-in solution. So with working with NEI, now that we have these formulas or dispersions with them, they can effectively sell that to their customer pipeline, and then we can immediately bring products to market. We want to make it as easy as we can for customers to purchase what we're offering and then use it immediately. We don't want to have any risk with implementation or really just avoiding errors there. At this early stage, how does customer demand look like? I would say it's very strong. We are in a very, very privileged position, mostly just due to the um, positive application data that we've generated at the Geek. Um, word of mouth has grown rapidly about Hydrograph and 
for a small company to have the interest that we have um, from, you know, overwhelmingly more now blue chip companies are reaching out as compared to early days when it's more startups that you're engaging with. Um, we're very lucky to have this interest. Obviously, it comes with some decision making internally because we really have to focus our attention on near term revenue opportunities. And of course, as we grow the team, we're going to be tackling more and more. And eventually we will get, we will get to the um, more high tech application areas as well. So speaking of market visibility and investor awareness, um, Hydrograph has achieved several key certifications and partnerships over the past year. How are you leveraging these? Um, I would say to a huge degree, we are very pleased to have ISO uh, 9001 certification. I think that we were picked up by a number of trade publications. Our PR group did a fantastic job in that regard. Um, but now that, you know, it's it's another, I guess, stamp of approval, kind of like the Graphene Council certification. It's more and more confidence in our ability to grow, to scale. If we're going to have a facility internationally, customers can know, you know, that we have a very robust system internally to ensure that consistency and, of course, the quality of our graphene product. Last question. Let's zoom out and look ahead. As we go beyond 2025, what are the major milestones and catalysts investors should keep an eye on from Hydrograph Clean Power? I think there's a few there. And of course, there's, um, you know, some nuance as well. But we are expecting contracts um, towards the end of this year. Absolutely huge degree within 2026. Lined up with that, we would like to list um, on NASDAQ. So we are looking forward to continuing to grow while, of course, keeping our CSE listing. And really, um, I do think that Hydrograph has every ability to be the largest graphene company. And I would say, especially in this high quality, highly engineered, um, high precision application area, I think um, we absolutely dominate there. We continue to release more data really than any other company in the market. And I have a tremendous amount of confidence in our ability to grow. Joining me today was Kirsten Brewer, President and CEO of Hydrograph Clean Power Inc., ticker symbol HG. For more information, please visit www.thecsc.com. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you. Thank you.